right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Texas by Frank Cespedes. Cespedes, how are you doing, Frank? I'm doing fine, John, and thank you very much for the invitation. A pleasure as always to speak with you. Absolutely. And Frank is the MBA class of 1973, senior lecturer of lecturer of business administration at Harvard Business School. He runs a business served on board. He's run a business served on boards for startups and corporations and consulted to many companies around the world. He's the author of six books and many articles in the Harvard Business Review, Wall Street Journal, California Management Review, and other publications. And his latest book is, let me just pull it up here so everybody can see. His latest book is Sales Management That Works, How to Sell in a World That Never Stops Changing, which is a great lead into what we are going to talk about today because uh, we're going to talk about AI and that is part of the world that never stops changing. <laughs> so, um, so Frank, let's, uh, let's dive into, let's dive into this. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about, uh, as I said, about AI today. And it just seems that the, 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 the pace of change and, and innovation around AI and the impact that it's having is, is, it's faster than anything. I mean, and, and we, uh, you know, I like to think of like, you know, growing up pre-internet and all of that. I mean, we've seen some rapid change, but this seems to be on another level of velocity altogether. Well, I mean, I think, you know, I think that's true. You know, uh, how many people uh, that we know could even spell chat GPT as recently as three or four years ago. Uh, so I think uh, it is uh, a remarkable uh, development. That said, um, you know, AI has now become a very, very loose term for many different things. And I do think there are lessons we know from other technologies that almost certainly apply to AI, and especially as AI will be used in sales. So yes, it's a big deal. And it's changing fast, but I don't think it's you know a complete revolution in human relations and uh, uh, sales processes the way some people talk about it. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And I think uh, your point is a good one to start with that it's a very loose term now, and you know there's AI, machine learning, you know, all of this kind of stuff is, uh, and and I think uh, I think part of the I think part of the problem is that uh, it is exactly what you're talking about. There is the conf the confusion around it. So it seems to, in many ways, it can be all things to all people unless you dig into it a little deeper. Yeah, well, I, I think that's exactly right, and we know why that happens. Anytime you have a um, a big new development. Uh, if you're a manager who's arguing for, quote, his or her fair share of the budget, you're going to hitch your pitch uh, to whatever is the current big thing. And, you know, uh, right mm -hmm. now it's AI. But I think the value proposition at the heart of AI is that the tools can do a task almost as good or in certain cases maybe even better than humans can, and at, therefore, as a result, you free up humans for tasks that they can do better, where, where certain kinds of judgment are required. Now, Peter Drucker, the great Peter Drucker, the management uh, guru of a previous generation, he made this point about technology in an article that he wrote about 60 years ago. And the article has a fabulous title. The article is titled The Manager and the Moron. And the moron is the computer, the technology. And Drucker's point was that essentially it's just going to do whatever you ask it to do. And that's its strength because it forces us to think, to set mm. the criteria. And machine learning, which is essentially what AI is about, is no exception to that rule, John. And for reasons we may want to discuss, I yeah. think it makes Drucker's basic point even more important 
uh, when it comes to AI machine learning tools. Yeah, no, I, I, I would totally agree with you. I, I would say that it is absolutely, uh, it, it is absolutely something that can allow us to operate maybe on a on a higher level and focus on the higher value activities. Uh, and and you're correct. And I think that's why it's important. Like, who is it, it's important about who is going to own the development of AI? You know, is it going to be open source? Is it going to be proprietary? All of that, because I do think. People are going to get sold a lot of uh, a lot of different solutions that maybe they haven't thought through the implications of. I think that's true, but I think that um, you know I'm going to invoke uh, what some people call the serenity prayer. You know, control yeah. the things you can control, and when you're in business and especially in sales, it's your responsibility to figure out what are the relevant actionable use cases for a given mm -hmm. technology and how do i get the users to embrace those applications and in sales i think there's two big areas where even in the short term uh, ai can help the first area is freeing up customer contact time for salespeople. right yep. i mean what the research tells us is that on average, obviously this will vary across companies, across industries, but on average, salespeople only spend about 30 to 35% of their time in actual customer contact. And by the way, that includes not just making a pitch, you know, uh, via Zoom or in person, it includes other forms of customer contact, emails, uh, webinars, demos. 30 to 35%. Now there are many, many AI tools available that can help you do the research about a company before you call them, personalize the emails, do content marketing. And think about that. If you can turn that 35% into 40, 45%, or you know, Nirvana, 50% yeah. or more, that's not only a big productivity increase, it, it's also, in most companies, it increases the addressable market because segments that were infeasible to reach now do become feasible. So that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. The other area I see AI uh, making an impact is in lead generation and lead qualification. Now, again, AI is just a, a tool but it is remarkable what these newer AI tools can do to tell you that, look, if this is your current uh, good customers, right. here are others that you haven't been focusing on. And mm -hmm. it does that usually with more accuracy than the folk wisdom in the sales force, because that folk wisdom is driven by their sales comp plan. Yeah. It's not necessarily driven by the market. So those yeah. are two areas where, where I see AI making a difference, not in the next century, but basically in the next few years. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. And I think that puts a I, I think that also puts a little more pressure on on salespeople now to really get back to that relationship building part and and maybe for for some of them who've you know, maybe hidden behind busy work for a while. It, it, I mean, it really does. When it frees it up, it also puts more, the more of the emphasis on how good are you at building these relationships? How good are you at expanding, at doing the, the human element piece that people really want? So in many ways, I think it's, as I said at the beginning, I think it's going to elevate the, the skills needed to succeed. I think that's right. And I think in that sense, AI is a continuation and to your original point, which I agree with, an acceleration of a longer term trend, right? We've had we've had digital technologies in effect taking over more and more of what we used to call simply transactional sales. It's where mm. the rep makes a difference. And usually that's in the area of relationships with all that that word implies. It's not just, you know, buddy, buddy, but it's I can add value. I know about your business. That becomes more and more important. But again, it's what we should expect. 
you know, mm -hmm. uh, I often say this to executives, and at first it may sound glib, but I, I think there's a core truth here. In business, you don't compete with the dead. You don't compete with companies that have gone out of business. They are, as we now say, history. You only compete with the survivors. What does it take to survive in a competitive market? You've got to get better, continuous improvement, adopt best practices. AI is the latest of those waves that are continually hitting the beach. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it too, um, Frank, I don't know if you agree, is that it also kind of, it also kind of forces you to look at your processes, look at how you're organized internally, look at how you do things. Because, you know, let's face it, there's been, a, you know, I mean, traditionally, in, 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 if we continue on the sales track, I mean, traditionally in, in sales, there's always been a little bit of like, uh, you know, pushback on process in some areas because you don't think, oh, well, it's a bit restrictive of how I do things. Um, but I think now if you're going to use AI effectively, you have to look at process. You have to look at how you're organized. You have to look at how your daily work practice is. And, and that's where you're going to get the gains. But AI isn't going to help you unless you figure out what it's going to help you with. Oh, I think that's right. Again, that, that was one of Drucker's points half a century ago. Uh, managers must manage any tool. I don't care what it is. It's only as good as the user's. And in the case of sales managers, I think AI really makes this salient. Um, you know, uh, the, talk about one obvious issue. AI is only as good as the data that it's yeah. given. You know, the old saw is still true. Garbage in, garbage out. And in sales, uh, the, the most common data that's fed into AI systems is, comes from the CRM system which is mm -hmm. notoriously noisy data, not because of CRM software, but because of the human element, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the input. You say a prospect is somebody who actually has a budget. I say a prospect is anybody I bumped into in Harvard Square, right? right. All the CRM system does is aggregate that. So managers have to manage those processes the other issue, which, which I predict will be a growing issue in the AI area, it'll get more and more attention in the coming uh, months and years, is updating the data. Yeah. Now, when, when it comes time to update data in traditional computer systems, it's relatively straightforward. You, you, know, you delete, you, you put in more. But AI is different. It's, it's these machine language neural learning networks. And what the algorithm does is double down on the data that it has. Meanwhile, the market is changing. Mm. Buying criteria may be changing. And unless you can update that data, you're basically getting increasingly irrelevant results. And it's not easy to update the data in neural learning networks. So Microsoft did a, a study of this a few months ago, and I love the way they phrased it. They said, um, uh, when you try to update AI models, it's quote, like trying to remove specific ingredients from a baked cake. Wow, uh, I'm on the board of a firm, you know, I, uh, uh, full disclosure, yeah. I'm on the board of a firm where we sell AI tools to um, sales forces. And I, I'll make two observations. One is by far the biggest expense and time for the client is not buying our tools, but cleaning up their data. Yeah, and yeah. then second, this updating issue is important. Clients typically get a very big boost in initial productivity, but then diminishing returns unless they update the data. So I think you're exactly right. This, you know, the, the, it's a different management model. It's not just, you know, having a shiny new toolkit. Yeah, yeah, no, and and that's a great point. And in fact, uh, you know, it's a timely one because we're actually with Pipeliner CRM, we're releasing our duplicate checker this. Uh, 
this month, actually this week, I think, uh, because of that exact point that you made there, um, uh, is that in in your CRM, like you need to have the you need to have correct data, and it's one thing getting data input; it's another thing having clean data when you're in there. So, right. uh, which is why we're introducing it. But your point is is a really good one because. You know, lots of people are looking at, okay, we can, we can, you know, use AI and we can use internal or private or, you know, data sets uh, and, and leverage that. But to your point is, if your data set is a big enough, if it's clean enough, if it's updated on a regular basis. And I think these are the, these are the underlying challenges that you outlined there. These are the underlying challenges, I think, that are going to really confront companies now as they think oh yeah let's bring this in let's use it internally and then they'll discover that it's not quite that simple if you don't have the data th data part sorted yeah but you know i also like to think uh the glass is half full uh as well as half empty I mean, think about this what the tool will force you to do and because there's so much interest and your competitors are adopting some of these tools you will the tool will force you to do this if you want to get productivity. And by the way, that'll have lots of good second and third order effects that are good for the company. But as you pointed out, it's reliant ultimately not on the technology. It's reliant on the management systems and the managers themselves as business typically is. All right. Business mm. is still done between people. Not yeah. between machine. Yeah. So, the, so um, as we move forward, uh, how do you see this impacting you know sales managers and sales leaders? I mean, what are they going to have to uh, change, or, or how are they going to have to approach this in order to get the maximum benefit? Well, I mean, you know, what I um, see a lot of people, in effect, saying in response to questions like that is you know increase your digital literacy somehow you better become a programmer i i disagree with that uh, i i think a whatever else ai does and we already know this it is going to increase productivity in software programming you know all that advice for a decade if your kid doesn't learn how to program you know she'll never get a job that advice was completely misguided ai is exhibit a for this i do think However, it does put a lot of pressure on certain management basics. A, uh, how do I allocate my available resources? In sales, that's always been an issue. AI makes it an even bigger issue. Uh, B, managing change. Uh, that is what we're talking about. That is what managers get paid to do. It is always the big issue. Sales is still... Um, uh, uh, about people. And the analogy I like to use is this. During the pandemic, I would get calls all the time from um, magazines, newspapers, managers. Gee, Frank, what advice do you have for how to conduct a virtual meeting via Zoom? And my response was always the same. How many people in business have you met that actually know how to run a meeting? whether it's virtual or in person. Focus yep. on that. The mechanics of using Zoom are fairly straightforward, but focus on that. I think AI is similar. Focus on some of those change management and people motivation issues. It'll make the adoption of the technology much more easier and productive. Yeah, and and I think that's a great point. Is is to uh, and and it's also also uh, Frank is get those quick wins, isn't it? Like go and show how this can benefit you, you know, quickly. A simple tool that can be deployed that can help uh, help benefit the team help benefit the team immediately out of the gate. But yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with you on this. Uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be, I think it's going to be exciting in many ways because this is the. This is the the thing that's really going to force people to be more productive, to be more, or or to to analyze things better and to construct them better and to get their processes better. Uh, because there's always been, I mean, a lot of people are will will say, yeah, I need to do this, but they don't really know where to start or they don't have the impetus to really see it through. This, I think, you're saying is now this is the impetus. Yeah, I I think that's right, and. 
you know, I, I think there's nothing wrong with sort of saying, I'm not sure where to use this, but that's, that's called experimentation. That's yeah. called testing. And that's exactly uh, what's required. And whatever else we know about AI, you know, if you and I do this again two years from now, four years mm -hmm. from now, it's going to be even more powerful and there will be something else. After AI, there will be B, I, C, I, D, I, D. That's sort of the glory of uh, the capitalist system we work in. It mm -hmm. is it is about those changes. And, you know, if you look at history, it doesn't mean the elimination of yeah. human activity. It increases the what you might call the keyboard for human activity, but it does require different skills and management models. Yeah. Well, if we do this in two years, Frank, it'll probably be with our video avatars and our voice cloned, uh, and people will never know that we're sitting, you know, on a beach somewhere. And my awesome. avatar, like you, is going to have a full head of hair. I hope that's the case. <laughs> well, listen, Frank, this has been fantastic. All of Frank's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do remind people what you do. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm not that exotic. I um, I was a professor. I ran a business for 10 years, got lucky, sold at the right time. I'm a professor again uh, and the author of uh, a number of books. The latest is the one that you so kindly uh, mentioned at the start of our uh, session. Yeah. And that book will be included below as well. And I'd encourage you to go check that out. So, uh, so listen, thanks again, Frank. Fascinating. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing where what we're talking about in two years time. That'll be a, that'll be amazing. Um, and like I said, I mean, it may not even be us. It may be everything we can set up and do it uh, using, using D I <laughs> E I F I. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Frank. Thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you all again very soon.